Welcome. Today we're flying from Dayton International Airport in Dayton, Ohio, to the Cincinnati slash Northern Kentucky International Airport in Boone County, Kentucky. It's a short 87 mile flight. The route has us proceed direct to Hidi, where we'll join the Tiger for arrival. We'll climb to 14,000 feet. We're in position on runway 24. We've just received our takeoff clearance, let's go. Check. The 80 knot call is a check both pilots' airspeed indications match. 80 is also a go, no go speed, under which the takeoff will be aborted for any malfunction. Above 80 knots, the takeoff will be continued except in several conditions which are briefed before every flight. Gear up. Autopilot's on. Flaps one. Flaps up. Time to start getting ready for the approach. This would normally be done by the pilot monitoring, so the pilot flying can focus on flying the aircraft and keeping an eye on things like the weather ahead. After retrieving the airport weather, we've an idea what runway and approach to expect. Let's check the arrival, checking any altitude and or speed constraints are in the box. We'll also note the bottom altitude, which we'll set on the MCP once cleared to descend with the arrival. And again, remember to fly the aircraft. Keeping the heading bug centered is an additional visual reference the aircraft is heading in the right direction. If you look at the navigation display and the heading bug is off to the side, it could indicate the aircraft is not on the heading you want. After reviewing the arrival and noting the bottom altitude of 8,000 feet, we can set up for the ILS approach. The chart's briefing strip is used, first we can set the ILS frequency on both radios. Then the inbound course, which is 186 degrees. Next, we check the altitude at phrase, the final approach fix, is correct in the box. And also build a 2-mile fix around it, for situational awareness. While in the box we'll set a flaps 30 approach reference speed, and auto brakes to level 2, so it'll be a 30 and 2 landing. We've been cleared to descend on the arrival, so set 8,000 feet on the MCP, the bottom altitude on the arrival. And check we're in VNAV path. 
The MSA is reviewed, and the missed approach instructions, as well as the chart notes. The decision altitude for this approach is 1,089 feet, which we set using the EFIS control panel. We require 1,800 feet RVR, or half a mile visibility to make this approach, which we have. On the airport diagram, we check the runway length, direction to turn off, and any hotspots or runways to cross during our taxi to the gate. Let's do a landing assessment for runway 18 left. We'll take credit for the thrust reversers. It shows we require 5,502 feet of runway and have 9,987 feet available, so we're good. Had it not been, we could change parameters such as landing flaps and auto brakes level. If still not good, we could try to burn additional fuel to reduce our landing weight, pick a different runway, or even divert if necessary. We've just been given a shortcut to CRISM and cleared for the ILS approach, watch what that does to the path. We're now above the path, so may need to use spoilers to increase our rate of descent. 2,400 feet is set on the MCP, the final approach fix altitude. We don't set mints on the MCP as it's an ILS and not a VNAV approach. We'll switch to approach mode prior to the fix. ATC have given us speed at our discretion, so we'll slow the aircraft and add flaps to help bring us back on the path. We have the option to extend the gear early or could even request a delay vector, so there are always options and no necessity to stick with an approach that's not stable. We can see we're getting closer to the path, with the decreasing value under the VNAV path pointer and deviation scale on the navigation display. The green altitude range arc, referred to as the banana, predicts we'll reach 2,400 feet before the final approach fix, so we're in great shape. Gear down. Below 200, flaps 15. The final approach fix is next, so approach mode is selected. Once flaps 15 are set, the speed bug can be set to V approach, our flaps 30 reference speed plus 5 knots. To do this the bug is simply placed on top of the green ref on the PFD. Below 190, flaps 25. As we're descending using the glide slope, the missed approach altitude of 3000 feet is set on the mode control panel. Below 175, flaps 30. With the aircraft fully configured and the before landing checklist complete, workload is low. A good look is kept outside for traffic. This is also a good time for a mental review of the actions in the event of a missed approach, what flaps will be called for, what calls would be made.
A brief airflow disturbance causes the rate of descent to momentarily increase, will go around if necessary. After a short flight, we've arrived in Cincinnati. Please click like if you enjoyed, and please consider subscribing to learn of our future videos. Thank you.